I haven't been getting notifications properly. I cannot believe that I am three days late on this. Y'all know I'll be on it. I cannot believe I have my bell hit too. I apologize, drinker. Now it's time to laugh. And the title is very much appropriate. Truly, we find ourselves sinking ever deeper into clown world when it comes to the entertainment industry these days. Whether it's Jennifer Lawrence, remember about five years ago when she was a thing? <laughs> Proudly declaring that before catnip ever spleen bounced into theaters to delight a whole generation of developmentally challenged 14-year-old girls, there had never been a female-led action movie before. <laughs> That's right, Jen. Cinema was basically the world's largest sausage festival before your apple cheek visage graced our screens. Give yourself a nice big pat on the back, girl. Or mindless activists with literally nothing else going on in their lives bemoaning the fact that Wednesday Adams isn't portrayed as explicitly gay in her new Netflix series. Because clearly it's just not possible for two young women to spend any amount of time together without automatically wanting to bang each other. Oh, yeah. Somebody put me back in the fridge. <laughs> but hey, amongst all the unbridled madness, hubris, ignorance and stupidity, there's the occasional grain of truth and common sense to be found. Like this article from The Direct, which claims that Marvel is extremely unhappy with Phase 4 of the MCU and is planning to retool subsequent phases to fix their screw-up. <laughs> And I've got to admit, my first reaction to this was, No shit, Sherlock. I've been saying that for the past two years now. Aside from one or two success stories that managed to recapture some of the old Marvel magic, mm -hmm. not to mention turning an actual profit, yeah. Phase 4 has at best been a relentless deluge of bland, forgettable sludge, and at worst, a mounting series of creative and financial disasters that are turning people away in droves. I can't believe they even now, I thought it would work. laugh at the fact that Disney Marvel's greed and arrogance have finally caught up with them, but the drinker is a benevolent dictator, you see. <laughs> and rather than just make fun of their failures, I thought it'd be better to turn this into a learning opportunity for all of us. So strap in as I take you on a whistle-stop tour of the top five reasons why Phase 4 sucks. And it has sucks. been a learning experience one, for them, I'm creative sure. direction. I said that before Phase 4 even began, that after the big blowout action of Endgame, there was no real overarching storyline left to drive things forward, no big looming threat that the heroes would eventually have to band together to combat, and as a result, there was no particular reason for people to stay invested in it. And well, it turns out I was proven exactly correct. The Infinity Saga was a piece of storytelling yeah. genius, because it allowed even the most mundane and unremarkable movies to feel like they were part of something much bigger and more important. Mm -hmm. A rising tide lifts all ships, as they say. It always felt like it was building up to something huge. You find yourself tuning into movies that you might otherwise have skipped, because you knew that sooner or later there would be some plot development, post credit scene, or character revelation that would drive forward that big overarching narrative. And naturally, you didn't want to miss it. But that big narrative came to a close with Endgame. And what they really needed to do with Phase 4 was move forward and establish a new threat. Something just as big and dangerous and compelling as Thanos and the Infinity Stones. Something that would grab the audience's attention, providing a new avenue to build up the tension and anticipation. And they really needed to make every movie feel like it was tied into that storyline somehow. Instead, what we got was a meandering and often disjointed series of movies and TV shows with no particular narrative thread or overarching theme to tie them together. Uh, it really nope. felt like Phase Phase 4 was a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly wherever the winds took it. It also truth. didn't help that it was kicked off with a trilogy of crushingly weak entries. First mm -hmm. up was Black Widow, a holdover movie featuring a dead character that might actually have been successful if it had come out five years earlier, and it wasn't shit. Oh, I thought it was alright. Then there was Shang-Chi, <laughs> a movie right. so completely bland and forgettable that I genuinely struggled to tell you a single thing. Same thing with that, I thought it was alright. The cast right. was boring, the writing was boring, and it felt like a movie that had no real purpose for existence. The fact that yeah, it you're right about 500 that. Million is a telling example of how unpopular it was. And lastly, there was The Eternals, which sank under the weight of its bloated cast, boring and meandering story, and ridiculously inexperienced director. There were a few half-hearted mm. attempts to build up the multiverse as like the background to be fought over, but it never Multi came through okay. strongly enough or consistently enough to really like make an impact. If. As a result, Phase 4 was basically a collection of movies with no real sense of identity, overarching story, or 
unifying purpose and so it right became too. a lot easier to tune out and skip films that didn't interest us. And believe me, there was all too many projects like that because... Man. Number two, quantity over quality. Yeah. In the first three phases, Marvel released a total of 23 movies over more than 10 years. That's an average of just two per year. For comparison, phase four alone saw the release of no less than 15 movies and TV shows in the space of just two years. <laughs> and the result is that it just became fucking exhausting for audiences. Every few weeks it felt like there was another Marvel product shot out into cinemas and Disney Plus, and the more it happened, the less meaningful it became. The release of a new Marvel project used to be a big event. Yeah, some were definitely bigger than others, but it always felt significant somehow. But in Phase 4, it became more of a dull, monotonous routine. Just another boring task to be gotten through instead of something special to be enjoyed. And if it was bad for audiences, then a punishing workload like this was even worse for the people actually working on it. Even a studio as big as Marvel can only develop so many projects at the same time before the quality starts to slip. And that's exactly what happens. Everything from the writing to the directing to the special CGI. effects began to go downhill mm. as the face ballooned in size and scope. The films that had once seemed so slick and polished began to feel rushed, clumsy and incomplete. Yep. And if they were bad, then the TV shows were even worse. Say what you want about One Division's finale, but the show at least started off with a creative and interesting premise that hooked people in. You can yeah. tell that a bit of thought and care had actually gone into it. Yeah, like and then it. compare that show from the very beginning of the phase to absolute garbage like She-Hulk that came out just a couple of years later. And you can see the disastrous drop-off in quality. Basically what I'm saying is that they tried to do too much too quickly, spreading yeah. their time and resources too thin, and the result was something had to give. And that thing turned out to be the quality of their products. Number three, hiring the wrong creators. <laughs> Another hallmark of the earlier MCU phases was hiring capable writers and directors that were up to the task at hand. Yeah, it didn't always go perfectly, but generally speaking, they were pretty good at finding the right people for the right jobs. Mm -hmm. James Gunn, the Russo brothers, John Favreau, and Joss Whedon were all great at what they did, yeah. delivering some of the best movies of the entire franchise. Damn right. But with Phase Four, for some reason, they decided mm -hmm. to bring in a series of writers and directors that were completely incompatible nice cut, with the right task. Yeah. Like given. That. Kate Shortland had a grand total of three movies to her name, all of them low-budget dramas, when she was chosen to direct Black Widow, a $200 million action spy superhero flick. <laughs> Fucking really? What did you expect someone like that was going to deliver for you? <coughs> or how about Chloe Zhao, whose main claim to fame was Nomadland, a movie about a woman who drives around in a truck and talks to people, who was suddenly put in charge of a massive, big-budget, effects-heavy superhero film with a huge ensemble cast. That's like taking a convenience store worker and putting them in charge of a Fortune 500 company. Or Loki, an action sci-fi show about a former supervillain's search for redemption, directed by Kate Herron an obscure British director who specialises in feminist comedy. Well, talk about a natural fit. It <sighs> kind of explains why the show ended up the way it did. Yeah. Now it makes even more sense. <laughs> she Hulk, a superhero legal comedy written by a team of people who openly admitted to not understanding how the law works or being particularly interested in superhero storytelling or understanding how fucking humour works, presumably. My point here is that while it's good Lord. to give newbies and unknowns a chance to prove themselves instead of just relying on the same predictable tactical every cringe. time, yep. you also have to be realistic about what these people are actually capable of. Hiring directors that have only worked on a handful of indie movies and expect them to take command of enormous big budget productions is a recipe for disaster. You have to build them up, give them a chance to get up to speed, instead of just throwing them in at the deep end and hoping for the best. Number they four, hadn't woke it up, I don't think it would have even been bad. Time waits for no man, and never is this more obvious than in the world of acting. After 10 years and more than 20 movies, a lot of the original MCU cast were looking to move on and leave their superhero days behind them. Normally that would be a good opportunity to refresh your lineup, bring in new superheroes and change things up a bit. But instead, Marvel's goal seems to be to just slot a different actor into the same character. Steve Rogers has retired as Captain America? No problem, we'll just have someone else take up the shield. Tony Stark is dead? Don't worry, we've got Riri Williams who can do all the same things he did. Natasha Romanoff is gone? That's fine, we've got a newer, cheaper version ready to go. Hawkeye's <laughs> getting a bit long in the tooth? That's cool, we'll just have someone else with the same exact skill set take over from him. Chadwick Boseman passed away in real life? Not an issue, we'll just have his sister become Black Panther now. And I can't shake the feeling that there's something really cynical 
going soulless about all of this. Like having someone take over as your favourite superhero is as simple and mundane as upgrading your phone to a newer model. Whatever history and attachment you had to the old character is somehow expected to be ported over to the new version, and it feels more like an assembly line than a living narrative. Personally, I'd rather Captain America just ended as a character, rather than forcing Falcon to become something he isn't. I'd rather see the last of Iron Man instead of some cheap second-rate pretender taking up a mantle they didn't earn, and I think audiences are starting to feel just as jaded. Believe it or not, they're more than just mindless consumers that will automatically move on to the next product. They're human beings with emotional attachments to these characters, and the more you try to manipulate them, the more pissed off they'll get. Number 5. Identity Politics Show me the a male hero in the MCU and I'll show you a dozen females that are portrayed as smarter, stronger and better than the men. the biggest way. reason why this show phase doesn't work. Show me an American chastised for violating the rights of foreign citizens All the and I'll show you a platoon of Wakandans doing the exact same thing and getting applauded for it. Show me a white man being put in his place for being patronising, overbearing or morally questionable and I'll show you a metric ton of other demographics who get to behave in exactly the same way with zero repercussions. Mm -hmm. The point is there's a very clear double standard in the MCU now and it's slanted very clearly in one direction. Men in general, and white men in particular, have basically been relegated to the lowest tier of the Marvel hierarchy now. Match them up against any other demographic, either in a battle, a test of intellect, or a simple argument, and I can pretty much guarantee they'll come off worse <laughs> every single time. <laughs> and what's really awesome here is when Marvel literally contradict themselves in their own universe. Falcon and the Winter Soldier made a huge deal out of American reluctance to share much needed resources with people who need it most, while Wakanda gets to do the exact same thing and nobody bats an eyelash. Wanda gets to mentally and physically torture an entire town of innocent civilians and be praised for eventually letting them go, while the man who tried to stop her is apparently the villain of the piece. <laughs> <laughs> the antagonist from Black Widow is shown to be a moral Who is that laugh? That laugh sounds real familiar. Who is that laugh? That laugh mindless killing machines, but his willing accomplice is treated as a goofy, likable hero by virtue of her being female. Is it really that guy again, laughing? Again, the MCU ends up tying itself in moral and dramatic knots trying to appeal to whatever the current socio-political trend is or adhere to the increasingly nonsensical rules of social justice and identity politics. And without wanting to be too blunt about it, well, pretty much everyone wishes they would just fuck right off with this stuff. Politics is the death of entertainment, bludgeoning people over the head with issues and messages they're sick of hearing about. And all of this from a multi-billion dollar company of questionable moral standing, written by pampered narcissistic idiots that have never experienced a moment of true hardship in their entire lives, and performed by vacuous morons with grandiose delusions that they're changing the world by performing in forgettable corporatized trash. None of these elements by themselves are enough to sink a franchise as big as the MCU, but collectively they represent an increasingly heavy anchor that's pulling them down. The more they try to bombard us with preachy, pandering, low quality trash that goes nowhere, does nothing and says nothing of value, the more people will inevitably get turned away from it. So if there's a lesson to be learned from all of this, it's that you really can have too much of a good thing. And the moment a studio starts putting content, money making or political activism ahead of quality storytelling, they're already sowing the seeds of their own demise. And it seems like those seeds are in full bloom for Marvel now. Anyway, <laughs> that's all I've got for today. Go, Go away, away now. now. <laughs> um, you know, I've always thought it was weird about the whole Taskmaster thing since he showed that. I was like, Taskmaster is a guy, first of all. And I'm just like, why did you even have a guy in the suit doing all the stunts and the majority of the shots and then you make it a woman at the end? I understand. If you were going to make it a woman... If you were going to make Taskmaster task a woman, why didn't you have a woman in the suit every single time doing all the stunts? It doesn't make any sense. Why try to fool us? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Anyway, can't disagree with much that you said, Tranker. It is what it is. Hopefully they're figuring it out. Maybe they're tired of losing money and popularity with the fans. and Maybe they're going to go back to what was working. All you had to do was create another big bad new threat in the universe, just like you always do with comic books, and start the big story again. That's all you had to do. That's it. <laughs> That's it. I right, had Thanos you could do Doctor Doom next, Galactus. You could do so many different big time big baddies, Kang, 
You know what I mean? Beyond her. Like, just so many different... But no. Post comments down below. Let me know what y'all thought. If you enjoyed my reaction thoughts on this, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and share. And sub subscribe to the Cosmic... Cosmic. <laughs> cosmic Wonder. I haven't seen any of his videos in a little bit. To the Critical Drinker. Tell him Tyrone Magnus sent you. 10 million subscribers. Woo!